Jehovah. You are Jehovah. I worship you. And I worship you. You are Jehovah. You are Jehovah. I glorify you. And I glorify you. There is no other. There is no other. No other God like you. No other God like you. Your name be praised. You are Jehovah. You are Jehovah. I worship you. And I worship you. You are Jehovah. You are Jehovah. I glorify you. There is no other, there is no other, other God like you, other God God like you. your name be praised. I am, I am, I am, I am, which was and is and is to come. You are the lion, you're the lion, you're the lamb, and the lamb. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done. Your, your train, to the temple, to the temple, for you are high and lifted up. Your name. Praise the name of Lord Jesus Christ. We're excited what God is doing right here at the Paxton Revival Center Church. Stay tuned for the next 30 minutes. We'll be taking you into some good preaching, singing, and why we're excited. And next Sunday, right here at the Paxton Revival Center Church is Pastors Appreciation Day. We'll tell you more about it right after here. Your name, oh, your name. Come on, put your hands together. Say you are Jehovah, you are Jehovah, I worship you, and I worship you. You are Jehovah, you are Jehovah, I glorify you, and I glorify you. There is no other, there is no other God like you, other God like you. Your name be praised. You are Jehovah, you are Jehovah, I worship you, and I worship you. You are Jehovah, you are Jehovah, I glorify you, and I glorify you. There is no other, there is no other, other God like you, other God like you, your name be praised. I am, I am, I am, I am, which was and is and is to come. You are alive, you're the lion, you're the lamb, you're the lamb. thy kingdom come, thy will be done. Your train, your train fills the temple, fills the temple, for you are high and lifted up. Your name is your be praised. For you are high and lifted up, your name be praised. Lift up the name of Jesus. We 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 we'll lift up the name of Jesus. We we'll lift up the name of Jesus. We we'll lift up the name of Jesus. You don't want to miss Wednesday night. Every Wednesday night at 7:30 in the Word with Pastor Steve. On Wednesday night, I have more time to slow down and to minister with the Word of God to you. You just need to be here. Also, we pray for the sick. Great things happen every Wednesday night. I'll see you in the Word with Pastor Steve on Wednesday night. You don't want to miss Friday morning miracle service. I will be praying for your family. I will be praying for sickness. Do you need a miracle in your life? Be with us Friday morning at 1030. Every Friday morning, God shows up in a great way. We'll see you here Friday morning for your miracle. Don't miss Friday morning right here at the Paxson Revival Center Church. Every Friday morning at 1030, a great time of the Lord right here in the city of Jacksonville. I love the Friday morning services at 1030. Then every Wednesday night in the Word with Pastor Steve, every Wednesday night at 7.30 right here at the Paxton Revival. I just love preaching the Word of God. But next Sunday, hello, hello, 43 years I've been one of the pastors of this great church. 43 years 
I know I've traveled around the world, preached over, over, what's over 50 countries, and God has been good to me. I just love God. I love the ministry. I love people. I love uh, helping people find Christ. I love to see people's lives change. And you want to be here with us next Sunday as we celebrate starting at 1030. Now, they're going to do some, some stuff early, so starting at 1030 next Sunday morning. I know we usually start at 11, but 1030 next Sunday on Pastor's Appreciation Day. If First Lady and I have been a blessing to you, you need to come and be a part of this. If you watch this on TV for, year, I, you know, for years, I was in another city the other day, and, I, and somebody said, Pastor, I've watched you for years. I would love to have some of you that's never been here to say, I would love to just come help you celebrate 43 years right here at the Paxson Revival Center Church. We're excited what God is doing. So many miracles take place that I'd like to take you directly into the live service where lives are being changed at this time. Y'all already know she is. Yes, I am counselor free, and I thank God. I thank Sister Willing, the pastor, and everybody that was praying for me because they found no cancer after the biopsy. There was no cancer in my body, and I thank God. To see, stay, see, stay, the thing, see, the thing is, they took biopsy, cancer was there. Same thing with First Lady, they took biopsy. Come back, and she was cancer free. Yes. Hallelujah. They even cut to try to find a cancer that couldn't. Hallelujah, mom here, cancer free, took biopsy, cancer, hallelujah, and, you know, which and afterwards there was no cancer. Five years of can uh, kidney cancer free. Five years, kidney cancer free. Pastor, God bless you. Thank you, uh, Pikes and Revival Center, for your much prayers. Cancer free from prostate cancer. Despite, despite the numbers, despite what the doctors say, God is bigger. That's it. That's it. Cancer free. Cancer free. Press your cancer. Cancer free. Cancer free in Jesus' name. Would you better go to a church that says it? Synovial sarcoma, 29 years as of October. Cancer free. And I want you to keep keeping on. Just keep it, keep it on. And God will bless you. Down the only years ahead of you is a big trail of faith. You come out of a faith family, yeah. and uh, you've heard that preach and teach, and you know you've seen thousands. I have. When I have thousands healed, I heard some come in service last night telling how God had healed for Friday morning, yeah. and it, uh, it's still, Brother Steve is really doing some preaching. you got to come out and hear him. A man, he, he, any Sunday morning, 11 o'clock. And, and I appreciate that, Dad. All that blesses me to see my dad and and to remember a great man of God that my dad was, and he loved to see what God was doing in my life, and I just would love for him to see what God has done since he's already graduated. We just appreciate what God has done. Thank God for the platform that he left for me to preach from, and thank God for a mom and dad that loved me, and I will never forget uh, the heritage that I have right here at the Paxson Revival Center Church. And make your plans to be with us next Sunday right here at the Paxson Revival Center Church. Into the preaching of God's Word at this First time. First Chronicles chapter 21. First Chronicles chapter 21. Because I really believe that this is a timely word for our nation and the church. Israel always represents God's people. I know, I know Brother Griffin, which in us, we were talking last night about the situations that we're going through in our world and not to be troubled by everything that we see, but show the love of Jesus in the middle of what's going on because love will cover a multitude of sin. The Bible tells us here in the first five or six words, and Satan stood up against Israel. The devil is standing up against God's people right now. The devil is standing up against God's people and provoke David to number Israel. You may be seated. David began to do something that he should not have done. The story goes on to say that he called Joab in verse number two and says, I want you to go out and number the people. Verse number three says, I want you to go out. And Joab began to say, King, aren't there all already yours anyhow? And, and, and you know, don't all of them already belong to God and are all of these the Lord's servant? Why would you require us to count the people? Nevertheless, the king's word prevailed against Joab, and Joab departed, came unto Jerusalem, and Joab gave the number of all the people of Israel. 
Verse number 6 is powerful, and I really wish I had time just to stop here and preach. Verse 6, but Levi, somebody say the praisers. Levi the praisers. Levi the praisers. And Benjamin counted he not among them, for the king's word was abomination to Joab. See, there was some the devil couldn't count. They were some the devil couldn't get a hold of. I wish I had somebody help me this morning. Because you can be preserved in the middle of your storm, in the middle of what the devil is saying, in the middle. God's got all of them. I feel it this morning. God's got some people that the devil cannot count. The devil cannot get a hold of. The devil cannot touch. Now, there's a lot of reasons why. Number one is what God knew that the Levites were devoted to service. The Levites were devoted to God. The Levites were set apart to God. And Benjamin, if you go all the way back with Benjamin, God had him covered. Because Benjamin meaning that he was the least of the house. Whenever you begin to feel like I am nobody, then look out. God said, I'm going to have you preserved. I'm not going to have you to be counted. Because God said, I'm looking for somebody that is faithful. Continue on. And it did please God in verse 7. Hallelujah. And he smoked Israel. And David said in verse 8, I sinned because I've done this thing. And do away with the iniquities of servants because I've done foolishly. And the Lord spake unto God, uh, David seer, and said, Go tell David, thus saith the Lord, I offered you three things, three things. He said, I'll give you three, I'll give you three years of famine. Or I'll give you three months that you will be destroyed among the foes. And, and the enemy will be chasing after you. Or I'll just give you three days. Three days that the sword of the Lord will come against you three days that God will come and send them uh, the pestilence from coast to coast and God will destroy him and David said in verse 13 he said I'm called in between I'm in I'm in this strait. he says let me fall into the hands of the Lord because I know he's a great God of his mercy don't let me fall into the hands of man but I want to be in the hands of God because God is great in his mercy and this is where I come to tell you this morning if we fall and we thunder and we begin to fail let me get into the hands of God and not the hands of man man will push you down and man will criticize you. Men will never forgive you. Men will remember what you've done. But let me get into the hands of a merciful God because he's a God full of grace, a God of full of mercy. And this is what David understood about God. I messed up, but God will still have mercy. I done crazy, but God will still have mercy. I done foolishness, and God will still have mercy. He said, let me fall. And the Bible says in verse 15 that God said, I stopped the angel. The angel already had the sword out. And the angel was standing between heaven and Jerusalem. Already killed 70,000 men. But God says, I stopped. Why? Because I believe that when David began to say, Lord, begin to show me your grace and your mercy, that God looked down and said, I'll forgive his sin because he is somebody that will come to me. He was somebody. And when David saw it, uh, uh, and, and, and the elders were clothed in sackcloth and verse Verse number 17, and David said, is it not commanded to, you told me not to number the people. I've seen and I've done this great things. And, uh, Lord, he, he said, don't, uh, he, he said, he said, don't hold it towards everybody's charge. He said, it was me that messed up, just me by myself. I, these are your sheep, don't hold them to your charge. And verse 18, and the angel of the Lord commanded Gad, and he told him, he said, you go say to David, go up to the threshing floor, uh, which up to Ormond's uh, uh, you know, I want you to go up there because up there because this is powerful and I'm going to slow down so that you can get it if you can and, and David says uh, unto Gad in the name of the Lord and Ormond turned back and, and, and when he turned back that uh, uh, he turned back and saw the angel now this is something we have to understand that and you know, the Ormond how he, him and his four sons saw the angel what was so powerful about this they were hiding themselves hiding themselves from the glory of the 
angel, the glory of God. But what I love about it, uh, that he had his four sons together at the threshing floor. He had his four sons. He had his family with him in the place of worship. He had his place there with him. And the Bible says in verse 21, David came unto Ormon. And the Ormon looked and saw David. And he went out of the threshing floor and he fell down on the ground. And David said, Grant me this place of the threshing floor that I may build an altar. Therefore, the, the, the Lord may stay this plague. And I'll pay full price for it. I'll pay whatever it costs. I'll pay it. In verse 21, Orman begins, verse 23 begins to say, Whatever he says, whatever you need, I'll give it to you. I'll give you the cattle. I'll give you the wood. I'll give you the wheat, whatever you have need of it. And the Bible begins to tell us at that point, back in, you're back in second. At Samuel 24 and verse 24 that at that point David stopped uh, and David took out and he paid 50 shekels of silver which means that he paid $125 uh, because the shekel was worth two and a half dollars each he paid 50 so $125 and this is a, a, a point that you need to hear that was a down payment that was only the down payment. It was not paid in full. Now it goes back to verse 25. And David gave him 600 shekels by gold. He, here he began to say, I give you a down payment. But I don't want just a little bit. But I want the whole territory. Now the Bible says that fire come out of heaven. And when fire come out of heaven, it was at the tabernacle of God. and It was at a place of the tabernacle of God that the Philistines had come in and, and destroyed much of the temple hallelujah but here it was up on Gibbon and but David was afraid to come because he seen the glory of God what was it David began to remember what used to take place at the tabernacle David remember what used to take place at church David remembered what used to take place whenever he was in the presence of God. And David said, God, let me give you this sacrifice. And the Bible said, fire come out of heaven. And when fire come out of heaven, it was saying, I accept the offer and I accept the sacrifice. Uh, yes, I, I, I've been afraid to go there. Uh, I've been afraid, but David said, I want it back. Uh, what was David seeking for? Lord, I want the glory of God back in my life. And this is where I'm at this morning. Uh, Lord, I wish we had a a church uh, that would get the glory of God back in your life. Uh, a church that said, I want the presence of God back in my life. Uh, a church that says, whatever it costs, uh, I'm willing to pay the price to get the presence of God. Or men begin to say, I'll pay it. I'll give it to you. But David said, I can't give something to God that I ain't paid for myself. I don't want the preacher to do all the praying. I don't want the church to do all the praying. I want to give it. I know I just give a little bit, Orman. David said, I'll give you just like 50 shekels of, gold, of silver. I'll give you the 125,000, but it's going to take more than that. It's going to take the 50 shekels of gold to buy the whole eight acres. This is what the Temple Mount was, eight acres. See, he started off, I'm just buying this little rock. This little rock, some 60 feet by 50 feet, 3,000 square feet. And, and I start off by just giving this to you to start with. But I want the whole territory. I want everything that is around about it. I want to give you this earnest money. But totally, it was some $120,000 that he gave him in those days. Imagine $120,000, the value of what it was, and, and, which, and it was over, over 3,000 years ago. So it was a long time ago. He said, I want to pay it, for, I want to pay it in full. I don't want to just give a little bit. I want to give it. Now, what was that eight acres we know as Mount Moriah? Now, Mor Mor Mount Moriah was the place where Abraham took Isaac up. So what was it that caused David to begin to remember about Mount Moriah? What was it that caused David to begin to remember about Gibeon, uh, you know, the place where the temple was? What was it? I remember what it used to be. I remember when I used to feel the anointing of God and the glory of God. Now the threshing floor, we understand, is a place of separation. 
God brought David to a place in his life that says it's a place of separation. It's a place that you got to forget yesterday and you got to go on. God said, I will bring you to a place in your life that it'll be a place of separation. You are not satisfied living just mediocre. You are not satisfied just by coming to church and, and paying your tithe. I want the glory of God in my life. I, I, I want to be able to have that relationship that I can feel the presence of God. I want to be able to be at the place of separation that whenever they come to Jesus, they found nothing in Jesus. Why? Because he had already been separated away. Where was it at? It was at Mount Moriah where the body of Jesus Christ was separated from his spirit and his spirit left Left him away. It's at the Mount Moriah. It's at the place of the threshing floor that we have to have a separation in our life. I know I'm a little old fashioned. I'm a little Pentecostal this morning. But let me tell you, they must be a time of separation. That's why he said, come out from among the world. Be clean and be holy. Be separated away. David started. He, he bought the mountain. Solomon come later to build the temple. What we start, our family would follow afterwards. When we begin to do what is right, Orman had his sons, four sons at the threshing floor. Do we have in our relationship with us in our family that time of devotion, the time of prayer? Do we have that time of separation? See, David owned all of his property anyway. Why was God saying, you got to go over here to Mount Moriah. you got to go over here to this place and buy this place. Because it was a place of, he re began to remember about Abraham and Isaac. He began to remember of what it used to be in the past. People said, it don't take all of that anymore. You don't have to weep and cry. You don't have to pray. You don't even have to read your Bible. If you just intend to do good, everything will be okay. The Bible said you must be born again he finally tells us that we must be born again so why was it that David wanted to take the census and why was it that he wanted to count all the people David began to number all of Israel Satan testing him Satan began to look at David Satan began to say something to David David you better get ready for the next battle one historian said he went out to number because of the fact he was calling for a draft. He wanted to draft everybody to come and fight a battle that ain't even got started yet, that God had not even ordained. Someone had said that, that he wanted a number of them because God promised Abraham your seeds would be like the sands of the earth and the stars in the sky. I want to see how many I got. But God said, I want to bring you back to Moriah, Mount Moriah. I really believe that it was called a five-letter word, pride. That David said, I want to see how many I got. I want to see how many people I've got over here. And I want to count. Now the real story is if you go back to 1 Chronicles chapter 20. The giants were gone. The big enemies were gone. The giants that he used to be afraid of was not there anymore. But the devil wanted to still tempt him. Because he said, David, just you better prepare. You do, you better. But the giants are killed. Even the ones that got six toes and fingers, they're gone. Even the big enemies, they're gone. You don't have all this victory. But now, after all of this victory, what happens so many times? We have one victory after our own victory. Then David began to get too big in his own eyes. And he began to look around and say, look how much success I've got. Be careful you look at your success. It was God that gave it to you. The Bible, Job said, blessed the Lord giveth and the Lord taketh away. Be careful you begin to count on, look what I have. You ain't done nothing. Matter of fact, you can't even make yourself breathe. It takes God to exhale. It was under the God's divine pre presence that David got up, but there was a spirit of pride that got in his life. But David got to the place. I want the glory of God back. I put something on Lelway. 
I got started in this, but I want the glory of God back. I want the, the glory of God that I, I used to have whenever I would get on my knees and I couldn't help myself, but I would cry. I, I would sit and I would read God's word over and over again. And I want the glory of God back. I, I want the presence of God back in my life. Uh, Lord, I, I know you used to talk with me. You used to, uh, which I used to have a relationship with you. You used to tell me things that were coming and, and you used to, I, I'd go down this road and I would just worship it. I didn't have all this other junk in my mind, but I've lost it. Why? We've allowed other things to come in our life. And what was David afraid of? Uh, David was afraid of, uh, I missed the glory of God. Uh, I want the glory of God back. Uh, could it have been that David, uh, how he had told Orman, uh, said, you just don't know how God blessed me. Uh, you don't know how I've been so blessed of the Lord. And you, just you don't, don't want to miss next Sunday right here at the Paxson Revival Center Church as we're celebrating 43 years of the pastor. Now, the church is, uh, that has been here for 53 years, but I've been pastoring for 43. Started all on the side with my dad, and my dad a great man of God, and hallelujah, and he's already graduated, and I know if he's looking down today, he's proud to see what God is doing with the church. And next Sunday, as we celebrate our 43rd anniversary as the pastor of the Paxson Revival Center Church, and I just thank God for what God is doing. I would love to have you with us. Great things are happening here at the Paxson Revival Center Church. If you'd like to have a word from Pastor Steve every day on Facebook, I don't do all the birthdays and drama, but I sure love preaching the Word of God. Just type in Steve Dobbs, and I'll send you a word every single day. We're excited what God is doing. Don't miss these three great, powerful services. Early worship at, uh, at 10 a.m., morning worship at 11, and 6 p.m. revival service Friday morning at 1030, Wednesday night at 730. Until we see you next Sunday, make your plans to be here. Oh, you'll make my day if you come next week. May God bless you be with our prayer.